overwhelmingly, the difference between Copenhagen and now is the economic case for action on climate change. And this is the reason why people are reasonably confident now about there being a Paris Agreement. Six years ago in Copenhagen, we didn't really know whether it was going to be possible to reduce emissions radically in a cost-effective way, in a way that countries felt was consistent with their paths of development and growth. This was particularly true for the big emerging economies who were seeing themselves growing very considerably over the following 30 years. Their emissions, therefore, naturally tending to rise, and they really didn't know whether there was going to be enough carbon space, as it were, in the atmosphere for their own growth. And therefore, they were reluctant to take on significant and certainly long-term emissions reductions. And to be perfectly honest, the developed countries weren't confident about it either. Over the last six years, the technologies and the costs of the technologies have radically transformed. We've had this massive reduction, 80-90% in the cost of solar, as very significant reductions in the cost of wind, which now mean that solar and wind are at the same price as coal and gas, fossil fuels, in many countries around the world, even without subsidy. We've now got storage technologies coming in which are going to radically change the business model for producing energy. In vehicles, we've got uh, uh, clean vehicles, electric vehicles, hybrids now coming onto the market. Um, we've seen in Brazil that it's possible to reduce deforestation even while increasing agricultural production. So in many areas, the technologies have completely transformed, the costs have transformed, and countries can now see reducing emissions really quite radically is now consistent with our economic growth and development goals. And you've got a whole new discourse of green growth has emerged, um, uh, to, uh, to which is capturing the evidence for that and the projections for this. And this is no longer just a, a claim for green growth or for green development made by environmentalists. This is now the World Bank, the OECD, the IMF. Everybody is acknowledging that this is possible. And it was all captured in the report of the Global Commission on the Economy and Climate, which came out last year with its, growth, its report, Better Growth, Better Climate. And those, that term, better growth, is very, is very telling. What we're now seeing is that a low carbon path of development, a climate resilient one, is not just possible, but it's actually a better path of development for many countries. So you look, for example, what's happening in the world's cities, which are now clogged up with traffic congestion, people dying from air pollution caused by greenhouse gases. And actually countries are saying, look, there's a better path of development than the old high carbon one. And that understanding of the economics of climate action has transformed the politics. Because, of course, now you've got many industries, businesses, which will make money out of reducing carbon, whose interests lie on the side of climate regulation and policy. And that changes the politics in almost every country. And that is why we have such a different context now for the international negotiations compared to a few years ago.